Today, we're going to talk a lot about basic biology, but we're going to weave in a lot of practical tools along the way for how to optimize these incredibly powerful things that we call hormones. Neuroscientist Andrew Huberman, a leading expert in the field of neuroscience, explains that low testosterone levels can result from a variety of factors, including lack of sleep, exercise, and social connection. We're here to unpack everything he has said about increasing testosterone levels and energy. But what exactly is testosterone? And why is it so important? Now, estrogen and testosterone and their derivatives are what we call sex steroids. Now, the sex steroids immediately call to mind sex, for obvious reasons, and steroids, meaning anabolic steroids. But I just want to emphasize that estrogen and testosterone are present in everybody. It's their ratios that determine their effects. So today we're going to talk about how you can optimize their ratios depending on your particular life goals. Because the ratio of estrogen and testosterone in every individual has profound influence on feelings of well-being, feelings of optimism, feelings of anxiety or lack of anxiety, on reproduction, on sexual behavior independent of reproduction. They are profoundly powerful molecules. And we all make these molecules to some degree or another, but there are also important behavioral tools, supplementation tools, as well as prescription drugs that can impact the ratios of testosterone and estrogen in really powerful ways. So we're going to cover all of that. I want to emphasize that when you hear sex steroids or steroid hormones, most people think about anabolic steroids. And of course, anabolic steroids are derivatives of testosterone or testosterone itself. And they are heavily used and abused in the sports community as well as outside the sports community. But there, of course, are many steroids that are not anabolic steroids that are also abused in sports. Today, we're not talking about drugs in sports, but I think that it carries such a heavy weight when people hear the word steroids, they think about anabolic steroids. So while today's discussion will certainly be relevant to physical performance, in fact, we're going to talk about how specific types of exercise, particular patterns of cold exposure, as well as particular patterns, believe it or not, of breathing can impact sex steroid hormones, both estrogen and testosterone. Testosterone plays a powerful role in determining which members of a given species will get to reproduce, which ones of that species will actually get access to females. It's actually more so that the males that have higher testosterone forage further and will fight harder for the females. And this is really interesting because there's very good evidence now that testosterone can reduce anxiety, promote novelty seeking, and promote competitive interactions. That testosterone lowers stress and anxiety, in particular in males of a given species. Now, this is important because we often think of testosterone as creating whatever masculinization or it's, you know, virilization or all these, these terms are thrown around. But what's it really doing when it comes to mate choice and competition? What it's doing is it's reducing the threshold for anxiety. And in doing so, it selects individuals of a given species to push further, being willing to, you know, suffer more. Um, although it also reduces pain, so maybe they also suffer less, in pursuit of reproduction in females. Now, it's well known in humans that both males and females who have elevated levels of testosterone will engage in more novelty seeking. And I do want to point out that even individuals without testes have testosterone and peaks in testosterone have similar effects regardless of whether or not someone has ovaries or testes. Testosterone increases generally lead to more foraging, more novelty seeking, increases in libido, and increases in desire to mate. So it is the case that increases in testosterone promote competitive and foraging type behaviors. Interestingly, Hoberman notes that estrogen also plays a role in male libido and that balanced levels of both hormones are crucial for overall sexual health. Many of us are familiar with the concept of pathogenesis, the idea that there are all these scary diseases like dementia and heart disease and stroke and all these things that await us if we don't take good care of ourselves and that might await us even if we do. That's the pathogenic model. 
Salutogenesis is something I learned about from one of my Stanford Medicine colleagues, which is a different orientation toward health and well-being where you're taking on particular behaviors, you're taking on a particular stance towards nutrition and exercise, supplementation, etc., in order to promote well-being above where you would be if you were not doing those behaviors. Now, if you think about it, there's two things, salutogenesis and the pathogenic model are really two sides of the same coin. But I'll just give an example of how this might affect you in a real way. If you like exercise because it feels good, great. But many people exercise or eat well for that matter in order to avoid heart disease or to avoid dementia, to avoid um, you know, negative changes in body composition. And while that's powerful and certainly is the case that exercise will help you move away from all those things, the salutogenesis model differs in that it involves a mindset and an orientation towards doing those things in order to feel good, in order to enhance your level of energy, in order to improve endocrine function and metabolic function. So it's really part of the pathogenic model. And yet salutogenesis is really more of a mindset toward why you would do these particular behaviors. If you tell people that the behavior that they're about to do in this case, it was people cleaning up hotel rooms because that was their job. If you tell them that it's good for them, then you see much greater positive health effects than if they aren't aware of that information, that it's good for them. So we should really be thinking about not just moving away from disease and negative things, but also why certain things are good for us because it's well established now from really good scientific studies that keeping in mind the positive effects of things can really have an outsized effect on well-being right down to the level level of our physiology so what can we do to naturally optimize our testosterone levels and maintain high energy levels breathing through the nose not through the mouth is powerful for improving lots of things a nasal breather and avoiding being a mouth breather can actually positively impact hormones and in particular the hormones testosterone and estrogen although the way that it does that is by making you a better sleeper, which allows you to produce more testosterone and bright light within the first hour of waking, whether or not it's from artificial light or ideally from sunlight, has these powerful effects on sleep and wakefulness. But we have to return to this if you wanna understand how light can impact hormones because hormones, light and dopamine have a very close knit relationship. So much so that your light viewing behavior can actually have a direct effect on hormone levels and fertility. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and libido. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and your ability to heal quickly. Think about a third element that there seems to be some excitement about lately uh, for other reasons, but that can actually have some pretty profound influences on hormone levels, and that's heat and cold. And in the winter months, testosterone and estrogen tend to be lower in many animals and in humans and in the summer months because of the role of dopamine in promoting the sex steroid hormones when days are longer and it's warmer humans tend to make more estrogen and testosterone relative to the other months of the year Huberman recommends taking plant compounds like Tonkat Ali and Fibogia agrestis here's why this is the testosterone molecule it, it's basically carried in a cargo. So it can be in its free form, unbound form, free testosterone. And everyone says, oh, I want more free testosterone. You want more, but the, these what are called sex hormone binding globulins. So there's something called sex hormone binding globulin and albumin. They carry the testosterone molecule to the different tissues of the body. So you don't want all your testosterone free. You want some of it bound up so that it can be delivered to the different tissues, including your brain. But if you have too much sex hormone binding globulin, the testosterone can't really do its things, okay? So Tonga Ali, about 400 milligrams per day, has the effect of raising free testosterone and overall testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. These compounds work by mimicking the luteinizing hormone, which stimulates the test to produce more testosterone. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.